Welcome. This is Barry Jones from Angelic Wisdom, and we're here for our weekly angel reading for September the 18th through the 24th, 2023. So before we begin, I'd just like to um, welcome everybody who's returning to this weekly series and to also welcome anyone who's new who might be joining our angelic wisdom community um, just a few reminders make sure that if you haven't done so already make sure that you subscribe um, select the all notification bell like dislike and leave your comments um, if you like to get an angel reading with me you can go to my uh, current website, theangelschool.com slash services. Um, and you can um, also, if you just like to donate to my channel, you can um, select my PayPal me link um, for Angelic Wisdom. Um, there's a description, um, there's a link in the description, description area as well uh, for that. I just want to say, I was going to sort of get into this, um, you know, I know, thank, first of all, thank you all for all your support um, right now. There's a lot of things going on, actually. And I've been receiving your um, prayers um, for my brother, Gary, and he's in the inpatient rehab now. And I feel like he's um, sort of settling in, I, I feel, um, into... The process and um, there's a little bit more I think I feel more encouraged uh, when I talk to him over the phone and and, and just seeing things <laughs> is interrupting my um, so there's a lot more I don't know why I keep seeing the word silence um, and soul but maybe he's in a more um, sort of um, space of just being open and listening and um, where his soul is right now and so that's going to be a really important part of his recovery however I've also because I know it's been a while since I've been able to get to the daily card messages um, I haven't been able to do the um, the zodiac readings um, when I came back from my visiting with my brother, at the very same time, the universe um, presented a job opportunity um, to me, another one that I was told about before um, I finished the other one for the public school training program for next year. And I just, you know, brushed it off because I couldn't see how it could possibly happen at this late stage. but. Um, so I've been preparing for that. Um, it's been a three process, a three stage process. This coming Thursday, I have an in-person interview for the first time, and it's an all day agenda with me teaching a demo lesson at the end of the, the day. <laughs> I'm meeting with, um, all of the, um, everybody um, that's a part of the school um, actually for different interviews all day long from like 9 30 uh, until um, about 1 about 12 30 um, and then I get breaks and then the time to set a de demo lesson and then begin so <laughs> um, it's an independent private school um, and very prestigious one. And so I'm just really honored. Um, it's teaching music. And I got to speak to my elementary school music teacher this week. And I can't even talk about it without probably getting a little teary eyed. It was, it was the most beautiful experience because um, she opened I, I mean, I wanted, I knew I wanted to be a music teacher um, after being in her class, you know, at a very young age. Um, it was middle school, fourth to sixth grade. 
and um and just to see that this person was what i felt about that teacher and how i felt that i could be myself and that that, that she really did see me as a as a human being and understood me um that i had the feeling all this time and in our conversation it just became apparent just how much in alignment um everything is and it actually helped me to really um come to terms with what i really wanted to do um and what my purpose really is and why the dreams have been you know repeatedly re <laughs> repeating itself for, for the last 12 years so um this does not mean I'm going to abandon my channel here because as I've said many times, this work has kept me, um, this is where I have grown. Um, and this is very much a part of my purpose as well. Teaching is what I do here and it's what my soul is. It's what um, the this work, the, the, the job I'm applying for is about and, and and it brings everything this job brings all of the components of me and everything I've ever done um, sort of together in one place I am I'm grateful for whatever the outcome is because it is it has definitely all these job um, interviews I've had have accelerated my um, ascension process meaning that the light within me has summoned and this is something that came up in the last two readings i did this week and it's i don't know if i can really get this out but it's important to understand right now that what's happening to each and every one of us and it's quite extraordinary <laughs> and some of you might say god it's been extraordinarily awful it's been hard and difficult it's been challenging um but these beautiful opportunities to heal to grow the light within each and every one of us and this light is love this light has been summoning one by one all the pieces of us the illusions of of brokenness the illusion of shadows um, that our belief systems and our interpretations have created and what's literally happening right now and one of the clients reminded me that um, years ago I don't even remember saying it but it makes sense that I when I t tried to describe what was happening in the year 2012 and the, 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 what this paradigm shift was sort of like was that we were sh shifting from a platform of fear. The old age, everything was established on fear from the moment of our fall from grace. We devolved into fear-based um, consciousness and reality. And in that, we learned a sensitive brilliant light beings divine beings learned how to cope over time and it's if we just all sort of inoculated ourselves with painkillers or any kind of um etheric drug <laughs> that could just help us to manage in this three-dimensional, the, the density of the three-dimensional reality. And at 2012, when that platform of love, the old paradigm was starting to be replaced with the new paradigm, the foundation of love, it was as if the universe has slowly been um, weaning us off of those things. And now we're at the stage where we're all off and it's like we're having withdrawal symptoms think about it and they're right in front of me capitalism is having withdrawal symptoms meaning that state 
of mind. I mean, you know, and the anxiety um, that is we're all experiencing. It's all raw. We're, 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 it's all there. There's no, nothing is being hidden. And people are scrambling. So we've been wondering why it looks like everybody in, in, in the world and our political um, leadership seems like they're all, <laughs> like they've, everybody's lost their mind. And we don't even know what we stand for anymore. And, and not just them, but the citizens around the world, really. And and it, what's so interesting about it is going back to this light. You don't have to worry about your healing process. You don't have to worry about the ascension process. The light is summoning those shadow aspects of yourself at the anointed and appointed time. You are going to overcome. You're going to manifest happiness. You're going to manifest your desires and your purpose and everything is going to be in perfect balance. It's not going to be indulgent, you know, um, or it's going to be rock bottom. Although it might feel like this right now, like we're just woo going back and forth, like just swinging, the, the pendulum just swinging from one polarity to the next, okay? Um, it, it, it's a time of, it seems like we're in a bipolar um, atmosphere or condition as our three-dimensional personality is struggling um, it, it, to shift into its fifth dimensional personality where all everything is embraced as love. I really want you to understand that because your light is summoning your, the shadows, the illusions that you've created, that it's calling it with a smile a beautiful smile and it's giving you a choice to and bringing forth the lessons that you are ready for right now that's the hard part because we are going to feel like we're not ready for what's coming we're going to feel like we're inadequate for the opportunities that are coming. And what I'm seeing is it's opportunities that the light is using to provoke forward, to call, to summon that situation, that illusion or that shadow aspect of ourselves. Because what it's doing, it's calling it. Because we know when light enters a dark space, it totally fills that space and that darkness no longer exists. It's a pure, immediate, instant infusion. And it doesn't have to hurt. It doesn't have to, um, we don't have to suffer, but it will feel like this to us because the our egos are resisting because it's afraid of the unknown. But you also don't have to go out and pick and look for the things that need to be healed because through choosing to embrace the opportunity that is being given to you, it will bring up naturally, in a very natural way, what you need to heal. So focus on love. I'm going to recommend, and I don't usually do this, but I'm going to recommend the audiobook that a friend 
gave to me when I was going through these interview process, and I haven't finished, but I'm pretty much through, pretty much deeply into it. Um, it's an audio book. I don't usually do audio books. It, it, it is a book, but it the soundtrack is very important. Um, and that's why I'm recommending this, but it's called The Power. And it's the same book, the same author of the book, The Secret. I'm, I, I can't say, I. yes, I did read The Secret um, a long time ago. I probably don't have it any longer. Um, I definitely thought Abraham was better in that regard, but this, no, this is really good. And, and what it reminded me of is that what the power is, is love and how important. And you would just see, first of all, how love has been there all along. It has been the causation for every action you have taken in your entire life. It has been sort of the impetus for every every engagement, the way you engage and why you are engaged or inspired. And that is where we need to focus right now on what it is that we love or what is loving us or, and, or what is captivating us with so much love when we uh, experience it. There's so much love being evoked even through your suffering, even through your pain. And I'm looking at pain as physical and suffering as emotional or psychological. When we suffer or when there is pain, it is causing us, it's first of all signaling us that there is something that we are not nurturing some it's it's it, you know we can say it's drawing our attention to something new that we're neglecting but there is something that we need to nurture and we don't like being slowed down by pain or suffering we don't like the distraction we don't like feeling it i get it i've been going through it however where it leads and if you can get yourself to think about why you're doing what you're doing, the love that is summoning you, again, this is the light summoning you. And it's scary because within that, the healing process and the lesson that needs to be set free from you is the purpose, one part of the purpose of this call. And they just keep writing the word respect. If we can just learn to trust and respect the process, then you will receive all the rewards. And that is the, the, the true, the, the, the light and the darkness. And I hate to use darkness and light in these two ways because they really are the same side of the coin. There isn't, they are the one and the same. It's a yin and yang, right? They're not different, but our concept of, of categorizing things and judgment and division and separation keeps putting distance between the polarities when they always exist together. Every subject, every choice that you're making has both polarities encoded within it. It's sort of like reading the, the, the cards here. And because the card is upright doesn't mean that the reverse energy is not also there for us to, to be aware of. They both work together as guidance. However, if the card is upright, it just says that this is where the energies focus. But it's also showing you the potential, the other side of that energy for yourself, the part that you might need to be working on personally. You can look at reversals as what do I need to be focused on internally or personally? What's what's going on? And the upright, the outer expression of it, they go together. 
not separate. Like, uh-oh, you know, this is going to happen. Or if a card comes up reverse and it, it, it all of a sudden means the negative. It doesn't mean the negative. That's our, inter we, our interpretation or our three-dimensional mind of duality focuses on one and exacerbates that um, energy when it's always the balance of the two energies that gives us the wisdom. So they, they've been writing this word purpose before I started. I'm seeing the word passion right now. And so it's really important for you to not worry about the illusions, to not worry about what you have to heal or fix. I'm trying to help you to understand that those things are inherent because we are human beings, spiritual beings in a human experience. They, they go hand in hand, but you don't need to focus you don't need to use that as your purpose or your goal. What you need, and this is not about avoiding anything, because as I'm saying, the light is summoning your purpose, summoning you towards your passion, which is your purpose. And through that, what needs to heal, will the lessons will come with it. And this is the part that we don't like. We, we want, we think when we set our, set our sights on a goal, that we're going to just remove all of our problems. So like, oh, if I just get a new job, that'll fix everything. If I just move here, that'll fix everything. If I have, if I just find myself a lover, somebody to love me, I'll be happy all on my own. It'll fix everything. These are infusions of the ego. They are not the light summoning you to purpose, summoning, inspiring you with pas with a passion because they are conditional versus unconditional. The, the light did not say to any of us in this human experience, when it summoned us here to this planet, that this was going to be easy. As soon as you get to your spiritual awakening, you don't have to worry. It's all over. You can walk the earth as a master. You are already a master the minute you stepped into this incarnation. You were a master and you still are a master. You're just playing or experiencing a mastery in a very different context. In this, there is duality, not to keep jerking you around and dangling carrots in your eye and making you feel like you're on the right path or making you feel like you're gonna have happiness and it yanks it away. No, this is a path of, first of all, free will. And with that free will definition, there is infinite possibility, contrast, polarity, so that you can, it's almost like making chemistry, you know, put, putting uh, elements together and, and creating all kinds of new um, experiments, right? Or experiences. So every, when the light summons you and, and inspires you, with a new passion, you have to have compassion in your understanding, in your interpretations of what is. You always are spinning a narrative. You can let your ego do it or your higher self who's going to do it with balance. That's why when something happens to us and we we're respecting the process. We'll look back on the past with appreciation and gratitude, wanting nothing to be different, but respecting how everything was because it brought you 
here to where you are now. And it is taking you, it is the, the strength of this is allowing you to move forward in a way that's incredibly powerful. And at one point seemed impossible, but now feels possible. And there are more lessons and more blessings on this journey. Our interpretation, like the feelings, the suffering I have felt in my body, in my heart chakra, in my crown chakra, in, in my sacral chakra, you know, I felt all this heavy, nervous, anxious energy. Lots of anxiety has been coming up, and I've been talking to a lot of people, a lot of friends who are experiencing a lot of anxiety manifesting in some really incredible and horrific ways. But it's all an interpretation. It it I the the way I felt it, I felt it since a child. Um, but I hadn't felt it in such a long, long time. Thought, oh, those things are sleep. Nope. The new frequencies are waking everything up because everything must come to the light. This is the process of the of the atonement now. And it's just love that's all it is it's love it's it's not about forgiveness it's love i mean forgiveness is a part of love but it's really about love and the light is summoning you know and it's just smiling and it says hey come here to the shadows to your ego to the facets of your ego that has been created by you so that you can face it with that light. And then the light infuses it, but it's not going to come. It's going to be suspicious, hesitant, all kinds of things. You see, your, We see ourselves doing this all the time, doubting ourselves, questioning ourselves, disrespecting ourselves or others. It's going to but the light is just going to say, yes, come, come. And as you walk closer to the light, the light will just infuse. It won't do it. It, will, it won't just rip it out of you. No, no, it's just going to, as you trust, it will imbue your, the entire essence of whatever that was. And you, and it will absorb it and you will feel the strength, a new level of strength, of fortitude in your own beingness. All right, so let's take a look at the Archangel that we're working with. Ah, Archangel Jercisa. Now, I'm going to look a, take a look at this card because when she comes up, it's a very powerful energy. You can just see it, right? And, and I've been talking about this infusion of light. And she is channeling this. So one of the things that she does is that she channels through you the light of the universe, the source frequency of the universe, down into the universal ley lines, the ninth dimensional ley lines of the universe. So I kind of think of her <laughs> as this networking, sort of the the internet um, um, of the universe um, when her energy comes through so that whatever um, contacts that you need to make or things that you, you're trying to communicate, that, 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 that you end up um, crossing paths, so to speak, with what you need. Now, notice that the message on the card says, create a solid spiritual foundation. Be in service to the planet. And it's sort of this feeling of, you can see, you have the Stonehenge-like um, structure here. And it, it, it's almost like this hub this hub of 
of of light, of resources, of um, spiritual reconnecting. And I'm just thinking about this in terms of the word purpose that they've been. And I feel like what's happening is, is that you're going to find this purpose channeling through you and summoning towards you the right components, the right connections for the right moment. And I'm seeing the angel number 85. So let me get my angel number book. And it says, hooray, you're experiencing positive changes in your financial situation. Okay, so there are, I feel like there's just this energy of, you know, whatever you are, in whatever area of your life, and if it's finances, that you're going to start to make connections or dots are going to be sort of put together um, or come together for you. It may not, it could be that, you know, a job opportunity um, comes through for you, but it could also be that you find um, you, a, a connection happens on your path that leads you to the right opportunities that will become the answer to your prayers or that you will find your sense of purpose or you'll know with deeper clarity and that this will come through that new foundation of love. This foundation of love now, there's an opportunity for you to really connect in to the foundation of love. So what I'm really getting is, and I'm feeling it in my body, is really now, more consciously be aware of this foundation of love, this new paradigm shift. And remember, the fear paradigm, you may feel like you're experiencing it, but it has been eliminated, it has been severed. But you're having this, what they call um, the phantom limb experience. And you know that energetically we can call up anything. So instead of planting your roots and your ground in, in an ambiguous right grounding, be intentional that you are now calling up when you ground, that you're grounding into the foundation of love. And call upon Archangel Jersisa to anchor your light, to anchor, first of all, the light of the universe, this very electrical light of the universe, source frequency through you, through your chakras and your heart line and down through your feet like roots and connecting you into the foundation of love. And then see, as though this foundation of love, it bloss it, it sends blossoms of beautiful flowers, blossoms, whatever comes to your imagination and see them growing and reaching up through the earth and through around your feet and through your entire body, see these blossoms just growing up through you, your brain, all your organs, your cells, and your energy fields. Bringing forth this beautiful, diverse experience of love. There are so many expressions of love. There's no limit here. There is infinite bounty. And anything that you're inspired or summoned to love or anything that provokes you to love, no matter what it is, if it's a house, and it seems like, oh my God, that's my dream house. Don't 
deny it to yours by saying or feeling envy. With gratitude, bless the vision that the universe has given you. Because it's saying to you that that is possible for you or something better is possible for you. So everything that inspires you to feel love to for something that you deserve or to feel just love for something that you want to create for yourself, thank it. Thank the universe for showing you the facets of your potential that are there for you to experience. All right, so this is a profound way that you can be of service to the planet right now is by really connecting into the foundation of love and being open to what it looks like, even if for right now, it seems, let me see, this is gonna, seems impossible. So the first card, now these cards were laid down in reverse. The energy just moved my hand. This is the first card I pulled and it went this way. It's almost like reading in um, Hebrew, right? Or some other languages um, that read in reverse. I'm not quite sure how to do that, <laughs> but maybe I'll understand it at the end. So we have here the traditional devil card, but it's the ego. And I think it's just so appropriate because we can see that this is what's being, this limitation is what's being infused. You can see that the aura, this is the same card as the fool, but it's masked. And the aura here is con con constricted. And so you might feel like right now, oh, it's so weird that I, I just remembered that the dream I had last night. There, oh my God, it was like somebody had built a corridor, but they hadn't built the actual walls. They just built the the floor, uh, the floor, and they they taped the corridor so you could see. And it was this big argument about, well, you know, we don't need a lot of space. It was like I don't remember they were trying to save money or what have you, but it was. I was thinking, I kept saying, you, that's not enough space. I mean, it's going to be so cramped when you put up the walls. And then it was like, it was sort of like a, 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 a it was like this, you know, so that imagine trying to turn in that, po uh, that point and the body, I just knew I was going to get, you could going to suffocate. You're not going to be able to move. You're going to get stuck in there. And um, it's this feeling right now where where we're so afraid of taking risks, but yet we're, it's almost a feeling of trying to, to skimp on things um, because we're afraid of, of loss. We're afraid of, of that we're going to not have enough. But the, I don't know if you can get the dream. It's like, but by creating, by skimping in this way, you're going to make it so that you can't move in the way that you need to move or you you're, you're not going to be able to be yourself so don't start with a foundation of limitation of fear get on that love foundation and let the universe show you the way to go about what it is that you're trying to achieve because you don't want to build a path of limitations for yourself. You don't want that to be because that means that you're going to be cramped as you try to move. Okay, so we have here the six of air. And so this is telling us that in your mind, you need to sort of really let go of some a lot of things. Let go of 
those, you know, those that inner voice. A friend of mine reminded me of this acronym for fear. And it is false evidence appearing real. False evidence appearing real. So it's it's almost like the ego here is the punctuation. And that we have to stop letting that follow us and, 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 and lead us. We need to put it behind us, not in front of us, right? We need to put it behind us. And the six of air is sort of moving away from that five of air, the contention, the mental um, struggle, right? The, 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 the negativity, the criticism, putting ourselves down. All right, allowing ourselves to be diminished and put in a box and labeled. Remove those labels for yourself. Remove the the remove labels of age. Of uh, I was just telling someone I saw a um ad an a, a, an article on my phone yesterday, and I thought it was such a great sign for me of this teacher who is 83 years old. He's been teaching for 60 years in the, the Upper West Side of Manhattan, where I live. For 60 years, he's still teaching. And when I looked at his face, his face was, skin was glowing. He looks, he looks youthful. And I'm not saying this to criticize, but I'm just saying, I'm gonna tell you this part just to show you how when we put aside our labels, even though we have sort of parent limitations, but we've labeled them this, right? But you could see he's slightly overweight, right? And there is his age, but he looks like he's still, he looks in his face, in his energy. He looks like a 20, a teacher to just start it, who's just really good and is passionate and loves what they do. And it just seems like he has many more years of teaching ahead of him. He's nowhere near the peak of his journey, his purpose. We place those limitations on ourselves because everything is labeled. Gender, race, you know, sexuality, every, our age, everything is labeled and it restricts us. False evidence appearing real. You could tell that the outer reality is the false evidence appearing real. And he has, he does not live from that place. He's been living from the infinite possibilities, the divine potential of his health, of his mind, of his desires, his passions. And that's where he lives. And many of us, I mean, I don't know the man at all, but just from the energy, what I was expecting when I saw the title was not what I saw when I saw that person standing there with his students. And his oldest students are 72 years old. And he's 83. And he and his body looks like a 50-year-old, like 59, 58 year old man who's just slightly overweight and has gray hair, but his skin and his face looks like a 30 year old man. So we have to, when we tap into the foundation of love, it is the fountain of all things, the fountain of youth, the fountain of plenty, the fountain of health, love, is our purpose. It is the impetus for all purpose. And we cannot restrict ourselves by using our fear, our ego, to point us in any direction.
Okay, so we have here the Ten of Fire. And this is a card usually about being overwhelmed, right? But everything is an interpretation. You might look at, an, a, you know, because this is something the ego is going to do, right? It's, it's the punctuation of the sentence, so to speak. But the ego will frame things for you from its perspective. It's always going to be lack. It's always going to be, you know, we, we feel overwhelmed. We feel anxious. But I've discovered that anxiety is really the new downloads flowing through us. So the other day, um, I realized I was going to be teaching the higher grade. And my lesson was kind of in the middle uh, between fourth and eighth grade. And my teacher suggested that, oh, yeah, they're going to know this stuff. So you might want to go to your more advanced lesson. And then I felt all that stuff come in my stomach again. And then, you know, um, I felt this huge overwhelm, like, you know, it's kind of like a headache, but it wasn't in my crown chakra. And because I'm used to interpreting every negative feeling as something bad is going to happen to me, um, until I realized, you know, this feels like a download, just not something, because it's a paradigm shift. It's like Uranus energy coming through, right? And just sort of like, just shattering belief systems, like my own, the, the, the entrapments that I've created, that false evidence, pure real, and the universe is just shattering this. And so we're probably all feeling like very, deep energies that we've never felt, very dense energies, because it's coming up and it's sitting there so that that our wisdom, our enlightenment, our light can shatter these things, clear them out. And so, you know, I don't know here, but the, the thing is, is if you love something, don't worry about how difficult it's going to be. Don't worry about it's gonna to be too much. Just like the day of the interview, the best way I can explain this, um, this is long interview before I teach. But then something told me, and I was first. My first thought was, "Oh my God, this is overwhelming. This is going to be too much. I'm going to be drained." And then, because of this new energy, these new downloads, something occurred to me and said, "You know what? But this is a good thing because if I go and I meet all these people, starting with the head of school, down." and then the entire faculty for lunch. And I, I'm i either gonna feel inspired or I'm not. And that's gonna tell me, you know, whether this is the right place for me because a, a, an environment that gives me energy is an environment that's always gonna do that. And that means that everything, the impossible is gonna always be possible because it's a, good collective um, uh, uh, co uh, cooperation and collaboration. So that should not interfere, right? So again, false evidence appearing real. You and I have the power of love to interpret things in a way that is reality. It's not, you know, um, what is it, this phrase I keep hearing? Um, poly, poly, polyandry. It's, it's, it's something like, you know, I'm, I'm making it whitewashing everything or nice, nice washing everything. But it is your free will to, to suffer or to have a balanced perspective of, of, of love and happiness. Balanced. All right, let's take a look at the card from the bottom of the deck. So the page of air. So this is a time for you to really focus on all the new thoughts. Every, you're learning so many new things. The world now is, although you're going through this intensity, but this is an opportunity for you now to change, to clear the air, to clear the, those beliefs out of your mind. Um, the universe is opening you up. So be curious. Um, be you know, bring your awareness to these very difficult times. 
This is about changes in your thought process, psychically, emotionally, spiritually, mentally, physically. We'll have all these things above will have an effect on your, your physical um, surroundings and and um, the things that start to come, start to manifest for you. This is all, I, it reminded me of the word manifestation, which they kept showing me and I just <laughs> saw it, but I just didn't bring it into my conversation. But all of this is going to affect the kinds of manifestations that you're gonna be experiencing. And they are going to be in balance in a positive way to what you deserve. And they're writing yes to confirm that. They want you to sort of notice, the, they wrote the word Sunday. So by next Sunday on the 24th, notice what shifts have happened collectively for you over the week. All right. So I send you lots of love and angel blessings and have a beautiful, beautiful week. God bless.